Together with the Throwback Podcast, we're taking a look at the goal line stand from 2004 to preserve a win against NC State. We're going to take a look at why this worked, how it happened. Start with this play right before the fumble. And all that NC State has done here, they're, they're lined up in a bunch right, and they're going to run a split zone. They're, they're going to this partly because they'd had success just a little bit earlier on, a, on the two-point play. Let's take a look at that before we actually look at this play. So you can see this is the same formation. Now watch what happens here. First of all, UNC does not match up with this the same way in terms of front. They matched up with a little bit less uh, with a little bit more numbers to the uh, offense's left side here. And they've got a blitz on. And then you'll notice what happens here. Nobody comes flat down and you get a big seam that opens up. And you'll see that this is actually pretty similar to what they ran. The main difference here is that you're going to get an additional puller from the guard as opposed to the guard working his way upfield. So once they come into the later uh, into the later play, they're they're coming back to the same concept, but rather than pulling that guard, they don't want to open up any lanes here. They're trying to run the same basic concept getting that back up field as quickly as possible on the basis of this. Now, Carolina did a better job the second time after seeing that same formation. You'll notice they're lined up a little bit differently. They're in a they're in a nine-man front here, playing inside out on the uh on the bunch here to make sure that the flat is protected a little better than they were on the last one. But watch what happens. There are two things I want to, I want to highlight here. One is when this offensive tackle steps inside, his job is to block the linebacker here. Watch what Tommy Davis does and how he comes flat down the line of scrimmage. And boom, he takes on that H back wins at the point of attack and is able to get his hands around the waist of the running back. And ultimately, that's what causes the knee to be down. And the knee's down right there. That's a really good call by the, by the linesman. So first of all, you've got to give credit to that. He does exactly what he's supposed to do. He recognizes the step inside, comes down, meets the pressure with that, sh with that outside shoulder, keeps his inside arm free, and is able to get able to make the tackle. The other reason that this doesn't score is right here. Watch this linebacker. This is Larry Edwards. Watch what happens. Watch how quickly he's already triggered inside to that hole. This is excellent work in terms of how quickly he triggers. What he's what he's keying on, he sees this split across. As soon as this H-back is coming across, he knows he's got to get downhill. He takes his gap, and he does miss the tackle. He doesn't finish the tackle. But if he doesn't make contact right there and completely slow McClendon down, then it's unlikely that Davis is able to make the tackle here. That's why this play winds up just short of the goal line, and that sets up this. This is the, this is the, the famous fumble. You can see them. They start. They line up quickly and, and motion to quick snap. Carolina's in straight goal line here. What your job is down in, in this space is to try to keep low man on the inside, make sure that you're in your proper gap, and then allow the backers to fill over the top. You want to make sure that no ground is given to the offensive line so that those backers can fill over the top. And in this case, actually, Khalif Mitchell, who's right here, he's got the gap inside the offensive tackle here. And he actually lets the tackle cross his face. That's not good. And if McClendon had actually hugged hugged a little tighter here, he might have scored right there. But in, but he's following his blocker like he's supposed to, and this actually works out well for North Carolina because even though Mitchell does get a little too high here, he's got to fire out into that gap. Even though Mitchell gets a little too high here, what happens is he keeps his feet going, does a good job working with his hands, gets his hands free, and happens to meet McClendon high. Meets McClendon high, actually, along with Malik Brown, who often doesn't get called out on this, but you can see Brown here right there coming free. He's the the other part of the wall. And you've also got to give a shout out to Tremaine Goddard for coming off the edge here and making sure that he eliminates any outside lane. The wall works. You get the fumble. Recovered by Kareen Taylor. And cue the celebration. One of the great moments in Keenan Stadium history this millennium. <laughs> 